Hello and welcome back to my lab. We're going to continue talking about these PSOC microcontrollers, uh, except today we're going to be talking about the analog to digital converters and pulse width modulation controllers. If you've ever used analog pins in an Arduino, this will be essentially that functionality, except you can do quite a bit more with these guys. From now on, I'm going to refer to analog to digital converters as ADCs and pulse width modulation as PWM because Good lord, that's a mouthful. So you can see here I've taken this uh, PSOC 5 stick and just put it on a breadboard so that I can uh, just add one little thing here, this little potentiometer. This will just give us a nice analog voltage that we can read off of one of these pins here. So as you turn the knob, that'll change the voltage coming in. So we're gonna set this guy up so that as before, the button, as if you press the button, it'll toggle the light on and off, except this time, we're going to read that analog pin for the voltage that we see here and set a PWM to set the brightness of the LED. We'll get into more detail uh, once we get into configuring these things, so why don't we just go jump to that. Okay, here we are back in PSOC Creator, and we'll just start with a new project. For this project, we set the microcontroller's main clock, or oscillator, to 24 megahertz. This isn't really necessary, but I just want to convey to you that you can just set these clocks however you like, and it'll give you an error message if it can't do what you've asked. So feel free to just play around with it and get a feel for it. Then we'll pull the old button and LED definitions from the previous project, and we'll start by setting up our analog input from the potentiometer. On the right hand side, you can open up analog, then ADC, then pull over the one labeled SAR ADC. This will be the basic ADC that you can expect to see in all of the different microcontrollers. On the input pin here, we just need to give it a name, and the default settings are going to work just fine here. This will be high impedance analog, which just means that the pin isn't going to sync a bunch of current. Now let's configure the ADC. You'll see that the ADC has a lot of options and, by extension, a lot of flexibility. And if you ever mess with a PSOC 4, you'll see that this has a lot more flexibility. But let's just set up a basic ADC configuration here, and then you can mess around later with the different options to see how it changes things. You can have the ADC automatically define its own clock if you use internal clock source, or here we'll set it to external, and just use the same clock that we're going to use for the PWM. This isn't really necessary, but we'll do this just to show you that you can. This particular ADC can give us a 12-bit resolution, but uh, we're going to set it to 8 bits here, because that'll go really nicely with our 8-bit PWM that we're about to set up. Then we don't have to do any conversions. On the input range dropdown, you'll see there's a bunch of options for different single-ended and differential sampling methods. If you don't know what a differential signal is, then just know that uh, single-ended is the one that you're going to want most of the time. And here you should note that VSSA and VDDA are the ground and power rails, uh, respectively, just so you don't get confused on that. So here we'll just select VSSA to VDDA, which means it will sample everything from 0 to 5 volts, which is our power rail. Then for our reference, we'll select internal, you can actually use an external reference, but you usually won't want to do that. So now we'll go ahead and define the clock that will be for the ADC and the PWM. We'll just make a new one here and set it to 1.2 MHz, which will be a nice divisor of the 24 MHz coming from the main clock. Now let's define the PWM. If you open up the configuration for the PWM, you'll see that there's quite a few options here as well. You can define its implementation between fixed function and UDB. Fixed function means that it uses the dedicated PWM hardware, and UDB means that it uses a universal digital block to define the PWM. These universal digital blocks are very reconfigurable, but you only have so many of them in the hardware. So unless you need the special functionality that a UDB provides, you should probably get in the habit of just using a fixed function. You can make 8-bit resolution PWMs and 16-bit, which is just another thing to play around with, really. 
and your use of it will depend on what you're trying to do. If you use the UDB implementation, then PWM mode will give you a ton of options. You can just go ahead and play with a bunch of those to figure out what they do. But for now, we're just going to use the one output fixed function mode. At its core, a PWM is just a counter that automatically resets itself. Period is the number that it will reach before it resets itself, which means that the lower the period, the higher the frequency will be. The compare value is how you set how much of the waveform is spent in the high condition. And then the compare type lets you control that a bit more finely. And deadband is a very rarely useful feature that you won't really care about until all of a sudden you really need it. Now the blue LED will be driven straight from the PWM signal, and the output of the toggle flip-flop will actually go to what's called a kill signal. The kill signal on the PWM is specifically just there to kill the output when the input of the kill signal is high. So that allows us to still use the button to turn the light on and off, but now the intensity of the light is controlled through the PWM. Now we still have to set the pins correctly, so we'll go to the pins tab in the design wide resources and drag the pin definitions to the appropriate pins. Once that's done, we should be able to build the project and move on to code. This one's fun because other than starting up all the individual components, there's only one line of code to write here. This line is reading the result of the ADC and writing that directly into the compare on the PWM. A higher value in the compare is going to mean that the PWM signal is higher for more of the time, which means the LED will be on for more of the time, which means it'll be brighter. So now we just need to program it and see how it behaves. So here you can see we can turn the LED on with the button and this knob over here controls the brightness. And with that, we're done. Pretty much all of the basic modules in the PSOC devices are that easy to set up. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. And with that, we'll see you next time.